His voice was full of emotion and hesitancy as he spoke. Now, a top diplomat from Myanmar has been fired for what he said. Less than 24 hours ago, Kyom Tun urged the United Nations to use any means necessary to end a month-long military coup. In doing that, Myanmar State TV says he betrayed the country. Let's remind you of what Myanmar's now sacked UN ambassador told delegates at the UN General Assembly. Myanmar military has become the existential threat for Myanmar as a polity and civilized society. Now is not the time for the international community to tolerate the war crimes and crimes against humanity con committed by Myanmar military. The international community must ensure that coup has no place in the modern world as bound by the UN Secretary General. In that regard, we, the committee representing Chirong Zulutor, CRPH, duly asked the United Nations, the United Nations Security Council, and international community that aspire to build peaceful and civilized global society to use any means necessary to take action against the Myanmar military and to provide safety and security for the people of Myanmar. Well, we'll get the latest on these developments shortly from Tony Cheng in Bangkok. But first, his report. Police in Myanmar's southern city of Dawei employing more aggressive tactics to disperse protesters. Advancing behind the cover of their riot shields, they fire tear gas into the crowd, forcing people back into the city's smaller alleyways. In Yangon, more aggression too. From the early morning on Saturday, security forces occupied areas the protesters had claimed as their own. Charging forward, they pursued protesters relentlessly throughout the day. Those who didn't flee were detained, and not just protesters. Several journalists were also arrested. But the mood on the streets remains defiant, behind improvised barricades to keep the police at bay. And the protesters happy to see their cause raised so publicly at the United Nations. We got so much encouragement to protest by seeing Myanmar's ambassador to the UN. That's why we're protesting with lots of energy and as much effort as we can have. We feel so thankful and got so much courage to see that the UN representative stands with us while we're trying to protest and get our state councillor and president released. In Myanmar's second city, Mandalay, the protests were led by monks. In this majority Buddhist nation, it's regarded as taboo to attack a member of the clergy but Myanmar's military has shown in the past it has no qualms about cracking down on monks, and it's unlikely these protesters will find sanctuary behind their saffron robes. Well, let's get more now from Tony Cheng, who's monitoring those developments from Thailand's capital, Bangkok. Uh, Tony, this uh, sacking of the ambassador was announced on state television. What reasons have they given well, uh, perhaps unexpected, given the, the huge amount of attention uh, that these statements got both uh, outside Myanmar, but also particularly inside. And as you heard there from that protester, you know, this is, has really motivated people today, feeling that their cause has been brought up before the General Assembly. But the statement read on uh, Myanmar State TV this evening said that, as you'd mentioned, uh, the ambassador had betrayed the country and spoken for an unofficial organization which doesn't represent the country, and he's abused the powers and the responsibilities of an ambassador. Well, the ambassador did make it very clear when he got up to speak in front of the General Assembly that he was representing the civilian government led by Aung San Suu Kyi. He stressed that they had won the legitimate election in November of last year, uh, but clearly he's not going to be in that position for much longer. Indeed. And, Tony, when he made that, that statement at the, the General Assembly, it's certainly when we spoke with our diplomatic uh, editor uh, when that statement was made, he, he did say that the ambassador was taking a massive risk and it poses questions about his, his, his wider family. I mean, are they coming in for any reprisals? Certainly the ambassador has, has lost his job. Uh, what about the family themselves? Well, you could hear the stress he was under when he gave that address, his voice cracking as he gave it, clearly under a huge amount of pressure. 
uh, we uh, I've spoken to some sources inside Yangon today who say uh, that the, the extended family are keeping their heads down, but they uh, do not appear to be targeted. But we do know that Myanmar's military has a history uh, of using uh, families overseas to um, to target people it wants to have influence over. Uh, no more uh, celebrated than Aung San Suu Kyi herself, uh, whose family were in the UK. And for many years, the military tried to manipulate both the family and her to try and step back from the political stage. It was something she always resisted. Uh, but clearly, they have established a pattern here. And uh, Ambassador Jaws family are apparently keeping their heads down at the moment. OK. Uh, Tony Cheng, they're bringing us the very latest uh, from Bangkok. Tony, thank you very much indeed.